We're not going to finish the work inside the four walls of our church. Imagine yourself trying to find truth and you're going from church to church. You try church A, you try church B, you're going up the steps to church C. Um, you don't know the people there. You don't know what they teach, what they believe. Um, you have no relationship built up with anyone there. It's scary, it's intimidating. You don't know how you're going to be received. Uh, are you dressed right? Um, did you bring the right version of the Bible? Do you have a Bible? Um, all of these things are barriers to people coming into our building. Welcome to the CUNA Idaho Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm Aline Andrews Socks, and I've been a member here for 20 years. One of the things that we have found the most difficult to do in our community is to get people in our door, and we wanted to do this in a unique way. They're out there, we're in here. Somehow we've got to get the good news, the message that we have, out to the people. We're missing 98% of the population. So we've got to figure out ways how to break through that barrier and connect with people and dialogue with them outside the, the, the walls of our church. It's not easy because some of we live so far scattered in the valley. My pastor came up with the idea to advertise a telephone number for a teleconference on a topic that would be of immediate interest to many people called it Community Conversations Live. You just take out a simple little ad in the paper every month. We did it every fourth Tuesday of the month. And uh, you advertise the time, the phone number to call, the access code, and your topic. We entertained questions and had a discussion. It is a great way to connect outside the walls of your church and allow people to get to know you, but from the safety of their own homes. They don't have to feel on the spot. They don't have to overcome that huge psychological barrier. I'd like you to meet Leah. She's one of our regular attenders now, loves our message. I grew up in a non-denominational church and I stopped going probably when I was, I'd say 19 years old. I stopped going um, for a number of reasons, but I just felt really judged in, in the church and didn't really want to really have anything to do with it and I had always been a Christian you know on my own but I just figured who needs who needs church you know it's you know full of people that are hypocrites and I just didn't want anything to do with it and uh, but then my son was invited by one of his good friends dad to come to his new church and play electric guitar for their band and so my son jumped all over that and started going and every Sunday we'd drop him off and we would go back home. And I just was like, I can't do this. And I'm like, this is just, you know, yeah, I may have been burned by church before, but you know, my son is showing interest in God and I need to support that. And she started calling in on the conferences. I could just, you know, mute it or put it on speakerphone not have to worry about my children coming up to me saying, Mommy, 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 I need this, or crying or whining, and me having to tell them, knock it off. Her husband wasn't even a Christian. I was never naive enough to say that there was never a God, but I hadn't sought him out and had lots of excuses why not to. We had just started going to a new non-denominational church because my son was involved in that with the music. I would uh, just uh, eavesdrop on the speakerphone and we could even have multi, I think there was one time that I even picked up the second line and, and listened in on it. And uh, you forget sometimes they can't hear you, so you're trying to be quiet in the house. But more so we wanted to quiet in the house so that the, we could hear for the kids. But it was really, uh, it's really easy. You could cook dinner, you could clean the house, you can, heck, you could watch TV if you wanted to and still listen to it. And it was really, uh, Really neat. And as you build the friendship and you build the relationship, then when you invite them to the live meeting, you have something to go on and they might just be willing to take a chance because they've gotten to know you in this safer environment. I think it's so funny how the Seventh-day Adventists seem to have it really, really nailed as far as their beliefs. I believed what they taught and I, you know, loved Pastor Randy and, and just, you know, loved them for a number of reasons just because you know they knew more about God's Word and just were more adamant about 
just, you know, following God's word. And that was very important to me. And so I, my heart was at St. Diana's Church. He answered all these questions for me that I uh, had that kept me on that fence. And finally one day driving down the road, I just uh, stopped fooling myself and just asked God to accept me. And, and I did it right there on the freeway, driving down the road. So it wasn't very flashy or memorable, but I pretty much uh, had no more excuses. He was a new Christian and didn't really want to go to church. And so that was hard as well because I felt like I would drag him along and I just don't want to do that. We've had Bible studies with her. But he was all over that. He was, yeah, that's great. Pastor Randy actually was conducting his Bible studies at our house. He asked if he could come into our home and maybe a few other people and, and do a Bible study once a week. So we've really felt uh, blessed to have him here with his knowledge and wisdom and and really, you know, had some great people show up. That we're friends with all of them still, and that, that's what really drew us into that church even more. We were having Bible studies with Rob and Leah Welfley, and as we progressed through the Bible studies, we came to the Sabbath, and it was clear that they understood the Sabbath and were had a knowledge of the Sabbath and were convicted of the Sabbath, but they were not attending Sabbath services because they were attending Sunday services where their son Gage was involved and enthusiastic with the program of the Sunday church. and. Leah asked us to um, pray for the situation because she felt really conflicted of how to um, unite their family in attending church on Sabbath when Gage was so involved in the Sunday church. And so we prayed about it. And the next time we met at Bible study, she had this story to tell us that the, the pastor of the church had just said that he was done. He didn't want to be a pastor anymore, and there was the only solution the pastor saw was to completely disband the church and close the doors. So in one week, she went from having this conflict of how was she going to keep her family united in a church to there being no church to go to at all. And ever since then, they've been very faithful in their Sabbath attendance. Everything started to fall in place. And even now, you know, even as much as I've learned it, just... Every time you do a Bible study or something like that, just everything makes more sense. You know, usually at old Bible studies and you know you talk to people, you'd always had these questions. It was just so confusing. But once you learn God's character and you read His Word, it just all starts to make sense. It's not that difficult. And then when you try to explain to your your friends and they're so confused, I'm like, how are you so confused? I don't understand that. And you just, they're just not open to you know His character. If you know God's character, you can figure out what He's telling you in, the, in His Word. You know, people can read his word. If you're not realizing who is saying it, then it's not going to make any sense to you. But if you realize God's character and what he means when he's saying it, it just clicks and everything started to fall in place. And the Bible became not just bits and pieces here and there, but a whole timeline and everything just flowed all the way through it until, you know, until prophecy, till the end, until what's happening now. It just seems so much sense. I don't know how it was for my wife, but she has been a Christian for so long, Why? and I'm a newbie. It's, uh, I look at it going, how can people be duped? <laughs> we have a number of people coming as a result of that teleconference outreach and the meetings that followed. And it's really fun to be interacting more with our community than we've ever been able to do before. I was just so thankful now to have a support group. This is how you build friendships, and they begin to see that who you are, and that you love Jesus, you're into the Bible, uh, but you're non-pressuring. And all your follow-up information is online, and they can go there, leave a blog, leave a comment, a question, something that didn't get answered on the teleconference, but it, it encourages and stimulates talk. Every one of our new people is involved in a small group ministry. They're involved, they're there on Sabbath, they're in my pastor's Bible class, and we're building bridges, we're establishing these relationships. And um, it's wonderful. It's not only energizing for them, but it's energizing for the church. Now we have children in our Sabbath school, and so our Sabbath schools have grown so much, and we are just so blessed. And this is just one way to connect right where they are. This has been Northwest Spotlight on Mission.